Today, we're going to be talking about airplane engines. Welcome to episode two of how airplanes work. If you haven't seen episode one on how airplane wings work, will be a link down in the description somewhere. Go ahead and click that after you finish seeing this video, of course. But today, we're going to be talking about airplane engines. Airplane engines can get quite complicated and they use a lot of engineering and science. So we're going to simplify it a lot for you guys, but even so, we understand three basic scientific concepts. The first concept that we need to understand is Newton's third law. Newton's third law states that every action has an equal and opposite reaction. For example, if I was in a shopping cart and I were to throw a bowling ball away from me, the bowling ball would move one direction, but I would actually roll backwards also. Now, while I am pushing that bowling ball away from me, that's what makes it go one way, that bowling ball also does push back on me, and that makes me roll backwards ever so slightly. The second thing we need to understand is the Gay-Lussac's Law. Gay-Lussac's Law states that if I were to have a closed box, and I were to increase the pressure of the air inside that box, the temperature of that air would increase. Now, if I were to increase the temperature of the air in that box, the pressure would also increase. Finally, the last thing we need to learn is momentum. Now, the momentum of an object is calculated by the object's mass times its velocity. So, for example, if I were to have a bowling ball that weighs 2 kilograms, and I were to have it roll at 2 meters a second, it would have a momentum of 4 kilogram meters per second. 2 times 2 is 4. Uh, now, you can change the momentum of something by increasing either its mass or its velocity. For example, would you rather be hit by a ping pong ball moving at one mile an hour or a bowling ball moving at one mile an hour? Probably the ping pong ball because it has less mass and it has less momentum, so it hurts you less. Now, on the other side, if you would had the choice between getting hit by a ping pong ball moving at one mile an hour or a ping pong ball moving at 100 miles an hour, which one would you choose? Probably the one moving at one mile an hour because moving slower, slower means less momentum and it also means it hurts you less. Now let's talk about airplane engines. There are six main parts to the airplane engine. The fan, bypass, compressor, combustion chamber, turbine, and nozzle. Now when an airplane engine is under normal operation, the fan is moving at super high speeds, which sucks the air in in front of it. Now, most of this air actually goes through the bypass. It doesn't do anything, it doesn't go into the core, it just goes right past most of the stuff here. And that's how an airplane actually gets most of its thrust. Very little of the air ever goes into the engine core. Now, the air that does first gets hit with the compressors. The compressors are spinning blades that compress the air down and increase its pressure by a lot. The super high pressure air is pushed into the combustion chamber. Inside the combustion chamber, the air is sprayed with a little bit of aviation kerosene, or jet fuel. Now this jet fuel and air mixture is extremely explosive and a small spark is created inside the combustion chamber which makes that mixture explode. Now when it explodes, its temperature increases by a whole bunch. And as we learned with the Gay-Lussac's law, when you increase the temperature of air, its pressure increases as well. So now this air has, it has the highest pressure it's ever had. So now this super high pressure air is forced past the turbine. The turbine is a series of propellers that are made to spin because of the air. Now the spinning turbine is also connected to the compressor and the fan, and that's how they spin, they're connected to the turbine. Now the turbine is also connected to an electric generator that creates electricity for the airplane's controls for the pilots, the screens that the pilots use to learn about the airplane systems, the lights on the airplane, and even that TV screen on the back of your seat. Finally, all that super high temperature, super high pressure air is pushed past the nozzle. The nozzle increases the speed of the air even more by narrowing down the hole that the air needs to pass through. This is called a Venturi effect. For those of you interested in looking it up, you can go ahead and Google it, but we might talk about that in another video. Now that super high speed air is rushed past and pushed out of the plane. Now, as we learned with Newton's third law, because the air is being pushed one direction, the whole airplane engine is pushed in the opposite direction, and it pulls the whole airplane with it. And this is what makes airplanes so fast. In fact, the fastest plane in the world can go almost seven times as fast as the speed of sound because of this. Pretty cool stuff. So let's back up a second. Why do we increase the pressure of the air inside the engine so much? Why is that so important? 
As most of us might have experienced with blowing up a balloon and then letting go, the high pressure air inside the balloon gets forced out the end, which makes the balloon fly around everywhere. The same way here, the higher the pressure of the air inside, the faster it wants to get out of the nozzle as quickly as possible. So higher pressure means faster air, and the faster the air, the more momentum it has. Like I said before, you can increase momentum by doing two things, either increasing the air's mass or its speed. Well, we can't increase the mass of air, air is, has a set mass, but we can increase its speed. So, the faster we make that air go by increasing its pressure, the more momentum it has coming out of the plane. And the more momentum it has, the better, because it can push back on the airplane engine a lot harder. And that makes the airplane move faster. Now, we aren't just spitting out hot air, guys. This is real science. Yeah. Well, make sure to like and subscribe. Leave a comment down below if you want us to answer a question in the future. See our last video on how airplane wings work. Click right there, and we'll see you in the next one.